Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on introduction to stimulus response techniques. So, uh, we talked about uh, the continuous casting unit and in that we talked about uh, the role of Tundis and uh, in this uh, lecture we are going to have uh, the discussion about uh, those techniques by which uh, we will be knowing about the flow behavior inside the Tundis so that uh, we can quantify uh, in, in quantifiable terms we can have the idea that how good the sum tundis is or how good the flow is uh, for obtaining uh, certain you know output or certain results so coming to the uh, you know uh, genesis of uh, this so first of all let us uh, uh, know that why you know we need to have a certain approach so that uh, we can understand you know the flow behavior inside the tundis and, and then uh, we can know the methods by which you can uh, you know uh, uh, quantitatively understand or, or interpret the things which is happening inside the uh, tundis. So, we know that uh, the tundis is uh, very important uh, in the continuous casting setup and uh, uh, Mainly, it has many roles, and first is that it is a batch type of vessel. So, it is a link between the ladle and mold, so it will have the role as a buffer vessel. So, the ladle will be emptying the you know steel into the tundis, and then the tundis will be supplying to the mold. So, uh, you know the, so the, the mold which is getting the metal it is uh, directly getting from the tundis. So, uh, ladle uh, from ladle it will be entering into the mold and then depending upon the tundis geometry the uh, metal which is uh, coming into the tundis. So, that has to flow through the tundis outlets and then it has to go into the mold. So, uh, you know that way it is important that uh, how which type of flow is there inside the tundis because ultimately the mold is receiving those metal which is ultimately going to solidify and you are going to have the cast uh, billets or slabs whatever it be. Then uh, it is uh, also as uh, working as a reservoir and distributor. So, it is collecting the liquid metal from the um, uh, uh, ladle and then it is distributing uh, to the strands uh, to the molds. So, it is uh, function is like a reservoir and, and then it is distributing to the uh, different strands or different molds. Then uh, another more important uh, you know why tundis becomes important uh, is the fact that uh, it is the last uh, reservoir uh, you know before the mold before the metal enters into the mold. So, after that the metal which is going to the mold it has to solidify and uh, if uh, the liquid has any kind of uh, issues then uh, that issue will not be uh, you know cannot be addressed. So, whatever issues are to be addressed like inclusions need to be floated or the temperature uh, you know has to be uh, adequate and all that that is to be seen in the tundis itself. Otherwise, um, you know after that once it leaves into the mold. So, there if something is there some external entity is there inside the liquid melt or so. So, it does not have uh, any chance further you know to be skimmed off although there may be uh, somewhat, but then uh, you know this is the last vessel before uh, the metal goes into the mold for solidification. So, uh, you need to have uh, um, you know the considerations for the uh, liquid metal to have uh, the desired composition uh, 
uh, when it is uh, going to enter into the mold or it is uh, free from any kind of uh, defect like uh, you, you know it is uh, clean there is no uh, you know uh, uh, inclusion uh, of any you know, type inside the tundes. And also the metal which is uh, being uh, you know which is uh, going out of the tundes outlet. Uh, they are of adequate temperature. So, there should not be you know unnecessary temperature drop uh, inside the uh, tundis because uh, uh, that will also be hampering the quality of the uh, you know uh, cast product. So, the thing is that uh, tundis becomes very important and uh, you need to have the uh, you know proper uh, flow you know uh, flow characteristic uh, proper flow pattern inside the uh, tundis uh, so that uh, the, uh, the the requisite properties or requisite quality of the uh, cast product be ascertained and uh, so the efficiency and optimization of these uh, processes uh, require close control um, of the molten steel flow characteristics within the uh, tundis. So, that is why the uh, tundis becomes uh, very important you need to have uh, uh, you know proper control of uh, uh, the flow inside the uh, tundis. So, basically the characterization of flow is important you need to understand the flow uh, what way the flow is uh, there inside the tundis the metal which is coming inside the ladle how it is flowing out of the tundis. So, where it is striking the wall or uh, uh, whether it is uh, going into all the corners of the tundis, whether any region of the tundis is there where the metal has gone and it and it is a dead region which is uh, getting cold or so. So, all these things uh, need to be uh, you know understood and uh, for that there should be proper methodology, proper way by of experimentation even by which you should understand that. So, uh, for that uh, you know uh, for the uh, detailed characterization of the uh, fluid flow. So, for the detailed characterization of metal flow uh, in the tundis or in any flow system uh, requires knowledge of the complete fluid flow pattern. So, you need to have the understanding of the complete fluid flow pattern for the uh, detailed characterization of that uh, metal flow. Uh, inside the uh, tundis. Now, uh, for that there are may be many approaches and uh, one of the uh, approach uh, is uh, that uh, you should have the knowledge of how long different elements of fluid remain in the tundis. Basically, uh, you know that the high temperature molten metal will be coming from the ladle and it will be staying for some time in the tundis and then it will be leaving to the mold. So, once it goes into the mold, so there you will have uh, the solidification starting and then uh, from the mold continuously the metal getting solidified will be uh, taken out. So, uh, the, the thing is one of the approach uh, you know to study that uh, how it will behave uh, inside the tundis. So, is to also in by taking in the way that you should know that how long the different elements of these uh, uh, fluid uh, uh, you know. So, they are remaining inside the tundis some of the elements may stay longer some of the elements may you know stay uh, very less uh, amount of time. So, that uh, approach so for that uh, we have a, an experimental technique which is used for uh, finding this uh, desired distribution of residence times. Uh, of the fluid in the vessel. So, what we do is uh, that uh, in that uh, we normally try to have the um, uh, definition of uh, one property like residence time. So, for how much time the fluid particle is residing inside any vessel that is your residence time. So, uh, we have certain uh, experimental techniques by which uh, we try to find the distribution of the residence time of the fluid in the vessel and uh, this is known as the stimulus uh, response technique. So, what this uh, stimulus response technique means? So, stimulus or the input 
basically it is uh, nothing but it is simply an um, addition of the tracer material. So, normally what we do is uh, we put a tracer material that uh, uh, tracer will be in the form of a dye or it may be a salt or acid or a radioactive material or a metal solute it may be uh, anything. So, that is uh, basically added into the uh, fluid stream you know uh, and that will be entering into the vessel. So, that is uh, and, and its response is uh, taken. So, you are uh, uh, basically uh, you know uh, adding this uh, tracer material uh, that is that will be in, in the form of any you know of these materials. It will be going into the uh, stream and then uh, you know its uh, output is basically uh, recorded. So, that will be uh, uh, its uh, information about uh, its uh, stay inside the vessel uh, that will be uh, you know uh, recorded. So, that is how its uh, uh, response is uh, uh, taken. So, the response or output signal uh, once there of you have injected these uh, tracer inside the uh, uh, vessel as the uh, input. So, once you have uh, put that then the response or output signal is then um, the detection of the tracer leaving the vessel. So, the vessel will go into the, 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 the tracer will go into the vessel, it will stay for some time and then it will be leaving the vessel. So, the output signal or the response uh, that will be uh, so, that will be uh, measured so that it will be detected that when the it is leaving the uh, vessel. So, that is the uh, basically the uh, stimulus response uh, technique. So, we are basically injecting something and then we are uh, uh, seeing that how long it is staying, where it is going, how it is flowing. So, these are the uh, stimulus uh, you know the, the, this is known as the stimulus uh, response uh, technique. Now, uh, what happens that uh, this response is uh, plotted as a dimensionless concentration uh, time curve which is known as the residence time uh, distribution curve of the uh, fluid. So, which will be representing. So, what happens that uh, when you are putting this uh, uh, tracer, so it will be going and then you are monitoring its stay inside the vessel and uh, then you are plotting uh, a graph and in the graph you will have on the x axis you will have the uh, time and on the y axis you have the concentration of that tracer. So, and, and that is dimensionalized so that is, that is uh, made dimensionless by, uh, by certain ways so that we will discuss. And then uh, uh, basically this uh, curve which you get. So, in that uh, you know uh, it tells uh, it represents the uh, time spent by the fluid particle inside the uh, vessel. So, how the concentration will be changing with time. So, uh, you know that uh, the curve which you get that curve is known as the residence time distribution. So, uh, you know uh, if you look at uh, in a normal way. So, for the incompressible fluid the the average time spent will be nothing but the ratio of uh, the volume to volumetric flow rate. So, as you know that uh, uh, the uh, you have uh, a volumetric flow in the tundis is q and uh, if uh, the uh, uh, v is the um, uh, volume. So, t will be the average uh, time which is spent by the fluid in the reactor. So, on, on an average uh, the fluid particle is going to spend this much. Some of the particle will spend less time than this, some of the particle will spend more than this. So, uh, you know that defines again the uh, different traits of uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, vessel also. So, that will be uh, that we will be discussing that uh, they will be representing different cases, different types of uh, regions inside the uh, vessel or so. So, then uh, so if you talk about the uh, residence time uh, distribution, so this uh, T bar which we have seen here T bar is uh, V by Q, V is the volume of the flow I mean uh, fluid uh, in the tundis and uh, Q is the volumetric uh, flow in the tundis. So, this T bar which you get 
this t bar is uh, known as the theoretical average residence time or the uh, nominal holding time of the fluid in the tundis. So, we call it as the theoretical average residence time. This is a theoretical value in actual and the fluid particle some of the fluid particle may stay long some of the fluid particle may be uh, uh, spending uh, less time than this. But if you take the average it will be coming uh, closer to this this is basically the ideal uh, kind of uh, value. Then uh, the residence time distribution of the uh, fluid in a vessel is plotted as dimensionless time against dimensionless uh, concentration. Now, the uh, as we have already discussed now the dimensionless time uh, that is theta. So, that is indicated by theta this theta is uh, uh, indication of the uh, fractional residence that is uh, uh, and this is obtained by dividing any time by the theoretical uh, average residence time. So, so the time which you are uh, uh, representing on the x axis. So, the time uh, it will be divided by the uh, you know theoretical average uh, residence time. So, that way you get the uh, you know uh, x axis that is your uh, uh, you know uh, dimensionless time. Then uh, you also uh, have the dimensionless concentration on the uh, y axis uh, and on the y axis uh, basically you get the uh, concentration also by dividing with certain concentration. So, that way you get the uh, dimensionless concentration. Now, the thing is that uh, um, there are two types of input of these uh, tracer inside the uh, tundis. So, you know, one is the step input and another is the, the pulse input. So, in the step input what we do is uh, we are uh, constantly applying this tracer uh, and it will be uh, going into the tundis constantly. So, continuously. So, that is your step input and uh, uh, that is also known as the f curve the curve which you get. So, the dimensionless concentration for the step input of tracer f, f will be c upon c i. So, as you know that c will be the any concentration of tracer uh, in the fluid at the exit of the vessel. So, that is uh, uh, your uh, you know uh, c and then c i with which you, are, you will be dividing that c it will be the tracer concentration in the upcoming uh, incoming fluid. So, the you are dividing that uh, c which you are getting with the uh, tracer concentration in the incoming fluid. So, that way you will get one um, uh, you know uh, uh, dimensionless value of the uh, concentration and uh, that will be um, f uh, you know uh, in that uh, case. So, that is your uh, giving you the step input. Then uh, if you go to the uh, you know so if you try to understand uh, we will see that how this f curve looks like. Similarly, the, when you go talk about the uh, dimensionless concentration for the pulse input. So, pulse input means uh, you are giving the uh, tracer only for uh, in, a, in a pulse manner. So, you are just giving some tracer some amount and then you are leaving. So, this uh, tracer which is going into very small amount it will be going inside the tundis and then it will have its path inside the uh, tundis. So, uh, with the bulk flow of the steel or, or whatever you are uh, allowing it to flow inside the tundis this tracer will uh, move and then its concentration will be also monitored at the outlet. So, that is known as the uh, pulse input of tracer. So, pulse input of tracer uh, in that case the dimensionless concentration which is on the uh, ordinate uh, you know that is y axis. So, that will be c and it will be uh, by c upon q by v. So, what we do is in that whatever concentration you are getting it will be divided by uh, q by v. So, q you have uh, you know uh, quantity of tracer which you have supplied and v is uh, the volume. So, that is uh, you know q by v is the average concentration of tracer when dissolved in uh, tundis volume v. So, that way uh, you are trying to uh, you know uh, 
uh, have a ratio of uh, c by q by v. So, that will give you the uh, you know uh, dimensionless concentration and dimensionless time as you see that will be uh, same thing like time will be divided by the uh, average theoretical mean resistance time. So, that will be your uh, you know uh, x axis. So, that way you can have the uh, uh, the um, you know uh, the c curve. So, in this case the curve is like inverted c type. So, this way so, that will be that is why it is known as a C, uh, it is represented by C and in this case it is going like this. So, normally we call it as a uh, F curve or, or uh, you know a step input or F the quantity which we uh, try to see. So, uh, if you uh, try to see that how this uh, curve looks like. So, suppose if you are talking about the uh, step input. So, uh, you know in the case of uh, uh, step input uh, what happens that uh, uh, you know uh, you have uh, you know uh, initially you uh, give that tracer and then that tracer will be continuously given. So, at the outlet the tracer concentration will uh, go on increasing. So, its value goes on uh, increasing and uh, you know uh, and when you uh, draw these uh, you know uh, uh, curve for the uh, step input. So, uh, that comes like uh, you have uh, the value. So, it will be increasing and then uh, you will be going like this. So, this way uh, you know when you do the uh, you know uh, uh, step input. So, in the case of uh, step input you know. Uh, so, this is your uh, time and uh, this is your uh, tracer concentration. So, um, uh, this concentrate tracer is basically continuously supplied and uh, um, uh, you know uh, the, so, it is uh, concentration will go on increasing at an, and at one point of time it will approach uh, you know. Uh, so, it will be approaching uh, you know unity you know. Uh, uh, at some uh, time. So, you know you will have theta. So, this is if you take this is a dimensionless. So, it will be close to 1 or so. So, if you go to uh, more than uh, you know twice the resonance time in that case um, uh, theoretical resonance time in that case it will be approaching 1. So, basically it is nothing but uh, you know many are there are many uh, you know examples of such systems like uh, if you uh, talk about uh, the flow of uh, uh, liquid steel in the tundis. So, it's in that case you can think of that case where uh, the uh, uh, tundis uh, has certain uh, grade of steel and then uh, you are having another steel which is uh, coming from the different ladder. So, that will be coming and then it will be uh, going through the inlet. So, now that will be continuous. So, in that case the, the next grade steel which is coming through the ladder and going into the tundis that is a tracer. So, this tracer initially if it goes inside its concentration at the outlet will be very small, but as the time progresses the new steel will be its concentration will go on increasing and, and, and after some time uh, its concentration will be maximum as uh, it will be coming through the outlet. Uh, uh, you know mostly it will be new grade uh, tundis I mean steel which will be coming through the tundis outlet. So, that is the example of the um, step input and uh, normally when we do the grade transition analysis. So, many a times uh, you know uh, we try to see that uh, after how much time what fraction of uh, uh, the old grade and what fraction of new grade steel is uh, coming out. So, these analysis can be done using these uh, uh, f curve. So, that is your uh, you know uh, step input. Then, uh, uh, then we are uh, talking about the uh, you know uh, c curve that is your pulse input. Now, in the case of uh, pulse input what happens that you are uh, just giving the pulse uh, or, or certain input uh, of the uh, tracer. So, if you uh, uh, come to the uh, you know pulse input. So, in the case of uh, uh, pulse input you are uh, just giving uh, some amount of tracer. So, you are giving for short pulse that is why it is uh, 
uh, pressure will be injected as a short pulse that is why it is known as the uh, pulse input. Now, in this case uh, what is happening uh, is that uh, you know the tracer will start appearing you know. Uh, so, it will start appearing after some time and then it will reach to a maximum and then uh, its concentration will go on uh, decreasing. So, that will be you know uh, that that will go. So, this way uh, you know what is seen is that it, it is uh, normally seen that is some, some theta is somewhere close to 1 here and uh, then as you move ahead uh, with time. So, the concentration further goes on decreasing. So, the tracer concentration is seen uh, to initially increase and then it will uh, reach to a uh, maximum and then further uh, it will uh, go on decreasing and then it will uh, come uh, asymptotically uh, totally it will decrease to uh, 0. So, you will have uh, you know the uh, you know dimensionless concentration on this side. So, you may have and uh, this is dimensionless uh, time. So, uh, your uh, it will go 2 or 2.5 and in this case maybe 1, 2 or so. So, it may be more than even 1 uh, many a times. So, as you know that uh, in this case uh, this is how the curve uh, uh, looks like uh, in this case. Now, uh, what is happening uh, in this case uh, it, this uh, is also known as the uh, delta function. So, uh, the output concentration will be uh, reaching to certain value and then it will be uh, decreasing to uh, you know. Uh, to 0. So, that uh, uh, you know that 0 case will come when uh, all the tracer has exited the uh, tundis. So, that is uh, the case of uh, 0. Now, if you plot on the dimensionless scale then in that case the area under this curve is uh, always going to be unity. So, we normally represent as if you take the area under the curve. So, 0 to infinity c d theta that will be normally uh, 1. So, that is how uh, we uh, uh, try to uh, show these uh, you know uh, pulse input cases. Now, this pulse input uh, will be useful for uh, uh, those cases when we try to uh, you know find out the uh, different uh, uh, tundis uh, you know regions like uh, suppose uh, you have uh, you may have the uh, tundis. So, if suppose you have a tundis like this and in, in one case uh, you have put in the tundis. So, this is your inlet. So, this is from where the liquid still is coming. Now, in this case uh, and this is your uh, outlet. So, suppose this is the outlet. Now, the thing is that uh, uh, when uh, you are uh, basically uh, uh, giving the pulse uh, you know that is tracer from here. So, in this case the it will come and then it may uh, go like and it will come. So, may be after uh, uh, the uh, time of uh, 30 second or 50 second or 40 second it has come out of this uh, tundis outlet. So, you will have uh, you will have some uh, it, it will go like this. Now, uh, what will happen? What, what what happens that in some case you can have uh, some kind of dam here. So, then liquid metal will come and then it will go here and then it will come after and then it will move. So, in that case it may lead to the change. So, the, the tracer may appear late and it may go and then it may come like this. So, the thing is that uh, you know uh, this way the C curves uh, will be changed. So, uh, now, this uh, uh, is uh, used uh, you know now what we uh, do in this case with the help of uh, C curve we also know that uh, you know uh, the fluid particle is coming in how much time when the concentration has there is no concentration coming out and based on that basically uh, we also we will uh, you know study that uh, we try to have the uh, characterization of the uh, you know space inside the uh, tundis we uh, divide them into like uh, uh, maybe like uh, different tundis volumes like dead regions or uh, mixed regions or plug regions or plug flow or mixed flow or 
you know dead reason. So, the thing is that uh, it will all depend upon how. So, this will be uh, found out using these uh, uh, you know pulsed input. So, if something has gone depending upon the flow pattern inside the tundis, how that is going to flow and when it is uh, you know uh, concentration at the outlet uh, can be monitored properly. So, that can be understood with the help of uh, these uh, C curves. So, this is uh, basically uh, these are the uh, you know uses of the F and and the C curve which is uh, used for the flow characterization uh, in the uh, tundis. So, in the uh, coming uh, lectures we will be uh, talking about uh, you know uh, how to uh, uh, represent these different kind of uh, regions inside the tundis, what are the, are the different types of flows uh, which normally take place uh, you know uh, without interacting or how, how well it mixes inside and all that. So, that we will be able to you know study in our coming lectures. Thank you very much.